Uh, we were given only one hour for a discussion. Now we have uh, 50 minutes, but <laughs> so we need to rush a bit. Um, uh, it's complicated. Uh, we want to discuss um, why it is so, so complicated, and we would like to give you a bit of introduction to our further discussion today. Um, uh, so, as a diversity hub, yeah, you can see why it is so uh, uh, complicated. Um, we did a research uh, with mm, former Delphi, uh, mm, uh, current Aptiv uh, company, and we tried to, um, we tried to uh, find uh, as many barriers and as many obstacles for women in their career as it is possible. So as Kasia uh, told us at the beginning, uh, yeah, it was uh, quite a hard work because um, the deeper we were in the topic, the more question we, questions we had. So uh, one day we realized that it's not about giving the answers because it's, there is no right answer, there is no one answer. Um, but uh, I think we should, we should go and understand, try to understand the topic. So this is why we are going to discuss um, today. Um, see the, that model we, uh, we had. Uh, we defined, um, so we found out that we can group um, all those obstacles women m might have on the way to, uh, of their careers. Uh, we can group them in more, four more major um, uh, groups, and these are qualifications. What doesn't mean that m women are not educated, but many things they are not qualified to be leaders. So this is why we uh, call it this way. Career mindset, so what we think and what others think about doing a career by women. Uh, maternity mm, and um, uh, home responsibilities. Maternity is quite a separate category because uh, we thought it is really, really strong obstacles and it doesn't last all the time, so uh, women face them in their particular part, um, part of their career, on their particular stage, uh, but it works very, very hard for, uh, for us and, and is very, very impact, impactful. So as I told you, it, it was complicated because it's not about that we only uh, put them in the order of those four categories, but also going deeper in this topic. We can indicate four levels of all those um, uh, um, factors uh, uh, that work for us, which is uh, social environment, uh, which is company environment, which is family environment, and finally, what we ourselves think about our careers, so our own mindsets and own perception. So as you can see, it's not the way to focus on one of them. Uh, many companies try to focus on one of them and resolve one particular problem, like, for example, uh, provide a nursery for, uh, for women, but it is not a solution. So, um, today I would like to follow you know, those ideas, those phrases that it is really complicated and try to find maybe some, uh, some answers to give us, uh, uh, to, to put us more closer to, to the topic and to to understanding um, of the topic. Okay, so mm, first um, I would like to talk uh, about is um, that consideration that women are not so well qualified to be leaders. So uh, according to Millward and Brown research, yeah, I, I see you, <laughs> I see you, Alex. <laughs> okay, we will let you speak. <laughs> So according to the research, um, uh, more than 50% uh, of women uh, claim that uh, they are discriminated in uh, um, working environment concerning their gender. And in the same time, they are well and better educated than men. So why is it really an issue? What is going on with all those qualifications? How can we provide such an organizational culture to empower women, to give women uh, real uh, equal opportunities? What we can do um, about that? Catherine. Okay, I think um, 
And as you've said, it's not that they're not qualified. They absolutely are qualified. They just lead in a different way, mostly, than men. Um, but for me, it's about education. And unconscious bias has a lot to do with it. So I think we need to really do a lot of education and understand and help us all, women included, not just the men, understand what our biases are. So what are the, the assumptions that we always make, the, the, the reasoning that we always think is the reason for women not getting to the top. Because if we take time to educate our, our workforces and, and our leaders to understand where biases might be in play when they're recruiting or thinking about promotions, you know, they have to really learn to, to think in a different way for me. So it's about, you know, helping, um, and as I say, not just men, but helping us all, and as women who want to progress in our careers, think a little bit differently about how we do things, about the assumptions that we make about people. I think it's also really, really important for us all as women to understand to have a clear sort of career path as well and to understand what we want to get out of our careers and make sure that we're having that conversation with our managers and our leaders because at certain times in our lives, whether it be around childcare or whether we're caring for older uh, you know, parents or whatever it might be, we might just need to take our foot off the gas a little bit of our careers and say, you know, for the next two or three years, I'm not gonna push forward because I actually am very happy where I am and I, I need that work-life balance right now. So it's important that we keep assessing, for me, our own situation, our own careers, where we want to get to, and be clear about that. Women are not great at pushing forward and speaking out and speaking up about what they want in their careers. So the more that we all think about that, um, you know, the more that we can, we can help, I think. Thank you, Alex. Uh, when we um, met before, uh, we talk about uh, we talk a lot about recruitment, and you see, uh, yeah, that barrier in that. Could you say something more about that? Well, I wouldn't call it a barrier, but what I found out, and and I just can echo what you said already. So I think that um, the approach of women is slightly different to the approach of um, uh, of men. So, um, and it is a consequent, so it is a conversation that we need to have about giving women the confidence in applying for any kind of roles. So if I can ask you, who has at least a bachelor degree in this room? It's perfect. Just to let you know, I have none. So, and I think I did something in the past which was quite good. So, um, so I, I, for example, I, I started to study beside of work, and then HSBC asked me kindly um, to stop studying and to take over um, roles in which my soft skills were really um, needed at this time. So, and this is why I think that I'm qualified right now. I think each and every time when we start the recruitment, I have normally already probably a person or something how, uh, yeah, the qualification in my mind and I have to have before I have the interview or something like this, if I'm talking about um, positions which are under my direct remit, I normally have a more informal conversation beforehand with the women. So also to, to show my support and to let her know, yes, I think you are qualified. And even if you can prove it on a paper base, I think you can anyway manage it through the interview and so on. And I think that our interview process and the whole recruitment uh, process has to be changed. And it's kind of odd that we still do it in the same way like we did it 20 years ago. I think um, leadership and leadership roles, everything will be changed in the future. And it's more on the advantage of women, because the leaders of the futures are not these hierarchy thinking, posh people standing and sharing the golden words of HSBC or of, of any other global player. It's more about the soft skills. And this is why I think that women have to have a word in it. And I've mentioned it also um, this morning already, there are researchers talking about the financial crisis that we had in 2008, where we have the perfect proof. If we would have 
more women in leading positions, it probably would have not happened in this way. So, and I think that we have to uh, to talk about it. We have to we have to have these conferences and so on, so um, that people think more about it. Because um, for a lot of people, diversity and gender balance is still invisible, and we we keep on going, and and we have to consequently talk about it. Thank you for uh, mentioning um, uh, the leadership model because this is what w I want to uh, uh, discuss as well uh, and I want to follow um, uh, with, the, with the topic. Um, look at, at yourself. You are so successful woman. You did it, right? So uh, my question is, is really the male leadership, we are talking about this all the time now, male leadership and female le leadership, the difference between that. Is it really an issue in business, Renata? Hmm. Uh, maybe I will not call it an issue, I will rather call it still a learning curve uh, because it's been only a few decades uh, since le women are taking leadership position. So, like, different leadership styles like uh, itself, they are good, good for organizations because they are broadening creativity and innovation pool. So it's uh, about this inclusion piece uh, I think we are talking about. So um, when we think about male versus female leadership style, maybe just to put some framework to the discussion, uh, what are the main characteristics? And again, very generic and maybe a bit biased. Uh, so when we th when we talk about women, we talk more about the transformational leaders uh, leadership style, which is characterized by uh, more I will say collaboration, uh, more looking for the consensus, uh, being more a team player, while the male leadership style called more transactional is about command and control and um, tends to create more competitive in, uh, environment. So. Does this uh, impact the gender balance? I believe it does. Uh, and I think the example I can give uh, is from my work, from the industry I work in. So when we look, uh, well, this is financial, these are financial services fund industry in specific. So when we look at the Krakow, so uh, gender ratio women to men in Krakow, it's 70 to 30%, very favorable to women. When we look at the same market in US, it's opposite. It's 30 to 70. So uh, I think it's sh clearly showing that it's not about the job content uh, because uh, the job content is exactly the same. Uh, it's mo more about the culture, about the history, about the environment, uh, which are driven by the leadership styles. Uh, so this is uh, one point uh, in terms of, uh, I, th I will say, the, the whole generation. Uh, for women, women leader, what does it mean? Um, so I think it can uh, sometimes put us in some uncomfortable situation because uh, when we think about the fact that we are consensus driven and something goes wrong and uh, we find ourselves in the situation that then uh, everything is about, I have to prove I'm right. This can be uncomfortable, this can be even intimidating. So when we think about uh, the culture uh, of the organization that, that is dri driven by the leadership style, I think that uh, women are tend to do three things. Uh, either we are not joining this industry or companies, uh, or we are taking step back and we are saying, uh, no, this is not for me. This job is not for me because we are not aware of the whole whole environment. Uh, or we are doing things uh, that I think is the most common, uh, we are adjusting, which means we are trying to prove that we can do the same, we can behave like a man, we can be... Ex yeah, the suit. same. Yeah. Wear a suit, cut yeah, Exactly, so, so, so we fit. Uh, and uh, I think by doing this, uh, by being in this adjustment mode, uh, we may lose a sight really about the real value that we are bringing to the uh, workplace, uh, which is diversity, which is uh, exactly the different style. So is it an issue? I will say yes and no. Mm -hmm. The solution for this uh, to your port country is education, right? 
this is still very much about uh, education and it is not only about the education uh, for women showing how to better manage careers, careers but uh, about uh, education of the male part of the population, right? Uh, so the way I'm always describing this, uh, I, I, I bet uh, there is a lot of people in this room who read uh, Reaching the Top by Wendell Wallace. It's a great book that is uh, raising awareness, what's not working, what are the barriers, what's blocking me. But imagine like uh, only the women part of the population in the organization reads this book and none of the male leaders, right? So what would be the impact? None, instead of the women are getting more and more frustrating, understanding more and having no, no change, and seeing no change. Uh, so uh, education, uh, I, I really, I think this is critical and also in these conferences uh, and I think this is what we are targeting in BBH, uh, organizing this type of meetings is really to have the diverse audience, so make sure that we are talking to both men and, uh, and women, so, so we are increasing this awareness of world, what, mere inclu what real inclusion means and how we can better support each other. Yeah. So we can say we do it because last year uh, there were only a few men uh, in this room, but today we have more than 30, so it's more than 10%. So it makes us, you know, uh, that, that we reached, uh, we did 1000% more. It's good. Okay, Anna, uh, coming back to, uh, to a topic, do we really, um, can we do anything uh, when it comes to the um, uh, uh, leadership model? F f what is your, your comment on that? Well, first of all, I need to acknowledge that uh, in terms of qualifications, yes, uh, uh, we are equal or even some researchers uh, show that women are better qualified. In terms of the leadership style, there are the differences. We need to acknowledge this, but I think this is great. But there is a trap about this female and uh, male leadership style, yes? Yeah? So because of the typical characteristic, yes, that, that you describe, uh, first of all, women are less likely to take some high power roles, yes? Because they don't feel they are good enough, they don't meet all of the qualifications. Uh, the second issue that I observe uh, is that um, uh, in some companies or in some environments in, in the companies there is still the uh, stereotype that uh, uh, to be a successful leader you should have the traits which are usually associated to masculine uh, uh, leadership style. You should be quite aggressive or let's say competitive, you should have more direct style of communication, you should be uh, um, uh, very assertive. So uh, it's, then it may influence the situation in two ways. First of all, again, women are not interested to joining this club of men because this is the man world. But also, uh, uh, um, uh, men are might not interested about promoting uh, women on this role because they think that they will not not suit to this to this uh, uh, to this world. Uh, in terms of some practical things, yes, what we can do? I think it's also about making uh, people aware, both uh, female and male, that it's not like about uh, fem uh, that there is not like w good female or male leadership style. That uh, uh, I'm uh, a big fan of. Uh, based on uh, own potential, and there are different diagnostic tools. For example, in my company we use uh, Thomas, but there are also some other tools, which first of all uh, helps the young leader to discover what is uh, my own leadership style, what are my, what are my, uh, my strengths. Uh, also, it's about making uh, people aware that uh, the leadership style should be adjusted to the uh, center uh, context in which there is a team. You may also diagnose the team uh, by this different diagnosis tool uh, 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 and uh, depending on the situation some, uh, some style might be more or less uh, uh, applicable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And now we come back to Alex. <laughs> Let's go deep into Alex's mind. <laughs> um, I would like to discuss with you about your own barriers, about barriers women have, you know, very deep in their mind, about their attitude um, toward ca towards a career. Um, what do you think holds women back when it comes to making a career? Because, you know, I, I have different experience and I meet a lot of women 
who are really not committed and, and it's not about their courage, it's not about you know, their attitude to, to be a leader because they don't want to be leaders. Yeah? And is it okay for them? This is the way they want to live and um, I wonder sometimes if it's not a kind of external pressure uh, towards women that we expect that every woman should have has the aspiration to be a leader, but it's not like that. So how do you think, do you, did you have such internal barriers, obstacles? What, uh, what kind of problems did you have? And if so, uh, how did you overcome it? Yeah, so actually, I think I'm probably not the best person to talk to as well. So first of all, I have to admit that I received my main support from male colleagues. So they always appreciated my different kind of handling things generally. Um, so um, w which means that, that I just have this positive kind of, um, kind of experience. At the same time, I have to say, and I think I mentioned it last, last year during the conference as well, it's quite interesting when I talk to my parents, right? So each and every time when I move to another country, um, they do not get it any longer. And the first question from my mother is always how my partner would deal with it. It's quite interesting. She's, so she's not really, I mean, um, sh she seems not to be really concerned about me. Um, so, which is good. Um, at the same time, um, she's concerned in which way my move will have an impact on my family, the kids and things like this. So, and this is something what we have to um, describe more often. So, um, and I think that um, it, it doesn't happen to my cousin, for example. He, he never has to find any kind of excuse why he wants to do the next step. Um, I think with regards to um, bringing in um, women, I just can repeat what I've already said at the beginning. We have to have more informal conversations. Because um, we have to convince women that they are the right person and that they should give it a try. Generally, we are always afraid, afraid probably a little bit more than, than men are. Not for all of us. But women, I can see a tendency that we are a little bit more afraid of making mistakes. And this is something what we as, as senior leaders in our um, organization as a women, what we can bring in from our side, support. Let's talk about it. So what are you afraid of? And these informal conversations, women networks and things like this, this is something what we have to, to implement. And this has to be a conversation each and every time when I'm talking about women uh, uh, networks and so on, please um, do not misunderstand me. So it's including men, because men have to be aware of how women are thinking and what is their approach as well. I'm generally a big fan of a diverse team, so I'm appreciating different kind of views because I think that we then can find better solution. So um, overall, so um, I I believe that I do not have quite a lot of barriers. Even, but this is also for, for some of my male colleagues exactly the same. So for me, for example, I would like to stay within Europe because I do not have a brother or sister, which means that if in any case something will happen to my parents, I want to be somewhere around. So, but these are barriers that I do not have just as a woman. That's generally um, linked to my job. So, um, and, and that's it. Renata? Uh, what are you afraid more or um, because I'm, I'm always thinking what, what is you know the most impactful uh, for, for us um, aren't we don't we believe in ourselves or uh, are we afraid of many many things because we can realize you know so many obstacles on the way I think that uh, sometimes uh, we are <coughs> over realistic or maybe sometimes pessimistic about our, our capabilities uh, so I think this is the main point, uh, but when I think about my barriers and really like life-changing situations so similar uh, to Alex, 
I think I was very lucky at the, from the beginning, uh, meeting great people, uh, male sponsors on my way who really helped me with my careers, career. But really this uh, changing moment, uh, Katrin was talking about, which is maternity. Uh, so it was for me six, uh, five, five years ago. Uh, when I really had to think what's next, right? Uh, because my, like the job I used to had back then uh, was consuming majority of my, my time. So I knew like having family, uh, it will not no work, it won't work very well. So uh, uh, during my pregnancy, I took a coaching sessions really to try to understand uh, what is important, what should be the next uh, step uh, uh, in my career to your points. Uh, again, how important is to realize what is important in, for you. Uh, but not just in the, your professional life, in your life in general. So uh, from this coaching, uh, it was very clear that uh, my priorities has changed, my work-life balance, my kid is the most important, very, very common situation. So after we finish uh, the cycles, my coach said, so you now you are ready, you can go to the interview. So I said, how am I ready? So are you, I am supposed to go and on the interview saying that the work-life balance is the most important for me? Who will ever hire me? Uh, and then she said like, okay, take a step back and answer one question. What would happen uh, if you don't say that? I may end up in a place which requires me to, link, uh, to work late, uh, including weekends. It will impact my work-life balance. It will uh, cause me unhappy, raise my frustration. At the end, uh, my employer would, would not be happy with my performance. And probably sooner rather than later, I will change the job. So lesson learned. Be vocal. Be really vocal about what, what is important for you, what are your expectations. So when I decided to make this move and, uh, and change the job, uh, I was vocal about this. And uh, the situation I can share really to prove that it can really work if we are vocal en enough is like I was, I think it was a couple months when I was in my new workplace and a partner, uh, one of the partners was visiting. In VBH it is really big deal, partners are the real owners of the company. So yeah, we are preparing for this visit for weeks. And uh, that day it was my kid's second birthday. So it was important for me not to stay whole day at work. So uh, for me it was organized in the way so I could give the presentation leave at 12, but of course there was a delay. And one of the managing directors, knowing that it is quarter past 12, he whispered to me, you can go, she will understand. So, of course, I stayed, I delivered the presentation, but uh, it's just showing that if you are vocal and clear about what is important for you, things are just happening. Yeah, and maternity doesn't have to stop, doesn't have to block your career. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. This is my uh, um, next question. I would like to focus on maternity. And uh, mm, um, I can tell you something uh, about that. Um, yesterday, um, uh, going back home uh, uh, from work, I told to myself, okay, now I have the evening and I will be able to prepare to, to this panel, finally, because I never fi found time before for that. And then it was about seven, my son uh, uh, started almost crying that they had little prince and he needs to answer, you know, a list of questions to the, that, that book. So I almost had to <laughs> read the book with him and help him. So that, that made, you know, completely different priority for me that day. And um, so maybe this is uh, why it was so stressful for me to start today, uh, today's conference. Um, uh, having that in mind that I had so little time to, you know, to prepare my English and uh, everything to be so perfect because it needs to be perfect. So children are so important for us. Uh, but um, in terms of our career, is it really obstacle? Do, th does the family, our family uh, responsibilities uh, holds us back? or we shouldn't focus on that in the workplace. And another question to that, what companies can do to 
help us resolve the problem. And it's not a question only about women, but also for fathers. Anna. Well, so uh, uh, if we speak about kids, uh, it's, I don't find this as an obstacle. However, it's uh, more challenging to, co to combine a couple of roles. Yeah? So uh, uh, at least when I compare myself when I was single, uh, it was easier for me because I could focus on, on, uh, on one role. And I think uh, 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 it was, I think, Randy Zuckerberg who said that there is uh, like fitness, friends, uh, sleep, work, uh, kids, uh, and car work like career. And you can, uh, if you wanted to be successful, you can, uh, you need to pick up free. So you cannot have everything. And, th and this is uh, at least my reality. Usually, I try to balance yes all of this, all of these roles. Uh, so uh, it's not uh, the obstacle, but it's more difficult. On the other hand, uh, companies, for a lot of companies, being family focused is one of the key values. So uh, they really try to implement a lot of a lot of things uh, to uh, ensure uh, uh, future m m parents or uh, ensure uh, uh, mothers, fathers, which are coming back, that it will be a smooth, uh, smooth return. So I think that we are going, uh, we are doing a good, good step. Um, I think that uh, uh, it's um, uh, one of uh, um, the interesting things which I read recently that uh, regarding the. Uh, maternity and coming back that it's not about the glass ceiling but it's more about in the companies but it's more about addressing a lot of micro uh, micro challenges uh, so to uh, uh, the article was about encouraging company to implement a lot of small practical steps uh, to make sure that this uh, change is driven constantly and what it could be and it's also something that we uh, uh, we have in uh, our company so first of all uh, it's about working from home. Um, and it's not only for uh, mothers, but it's also for fathers and for, for everybody, yes? Because what, is, what I think is also important is to do not make a specific benefits, for example, for, for mothers only. Uh, uh, otherwise, some of them will feel a little bit guilty. Okay, I'm working from home, so probably I'm not so good, yes, as the people who are not working from home, yes? so. We have different situations and we need to work from home sometimes. Uh, second uh, thing is about flexible working hours, which are very, very, very important. Uh, not only, again, because of the kids, but also because of business environment. Yes, sometimes you need to uh, uh, wake up very, very early. Uh, because of the meetings related to the region, which is six hours earlier, sometimes you need to work uh, very, very late and the flexible, hour, flexible working hours are helping you with this. Uh, also for the women who are coming back from maternity, um, especially this is important and uh, useful for the global leaders, uh, it's about a special project. So uh, special, like baby-friendly projects, yes, what I, what I mean. Uh, the projects are important, but if uh, 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 before maternity the, uh, the role required a lot of traveling during uh, the period after maternity, uh, this uh, travel might be uh, limited or, or, or stopped, yes? Which is, especially in this, the, in this first uh, period, very important. Also during the maternity, so the when the women are uh, not at work, um, uh, it's important to stay connected with them. There are a lot of great tools, yes? For example, uh, at Laxov recently we implement uh, workplace, it's like a communication tool um, uh, by Facebook, and in not invasive way, if they are interested, they can still see what's, what's going on in the company. Uh, and uh, uh, also by this tool we support different type of the communities of young, father, uh, of young fathers, young uh, parents, young mothers, yes? Because uh, in a community it's also easier to share uh, what are the difficulties and what are the benefits of this situation. And do you see many, many women use that system you mentioned? Yeah, I, uh, uh, we, are, uh, we implemented the, the workplace a couple months ago, but uh, 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 I see that uh, uh, the, the women who are on maternity have the accounts, yes, and they are sometimes quite active, yes, in liking or sharing some of the posts. Thank you so much. Uh, Catherine, 
um, uh, what what else solutions, um, um, what other solutions uh, companies can undertake to uh, help all of us? I think um, flexible and agile working is really, really important. But what really enables that to happen is trust. So, you know, you say about working from home and people have very different views, but you have to get to the level with your, with your team and with your, your colleagues of a level of trust. So, um, you know, if somebody is going to work from home because that helps their life-work balance and helps them care for the children, you know, you have to trust them to get the work done. And I think that, you know, I know women who will do a few hours in the morning when the children are at school and then they have a break in the afternoon but then they'll do a few more hours at work uh, you know at home in the evening and I think that trust is really really important I think the other thing is as well it shouldn't be seen as um, there's a lot of, of people that worry about client facing women if you work in a business that works with clients how that client will be impacted when the woman goes on maternity well, for me, it should all be about planning. You know that the woman is going on maternity in a few months. So why not use that opportunity to get someone who's a little bit more junior on secondment and help support that, the person who's going on maternity so that they can help with their clients while they're off? You know, there's a lot of different ways of thinking, I think, that we, we need to think about. We know it's going to happen. We know the woman's going to take a, a number of months off. You know, this has happened for decades. I think we should just all get a bit more professional about dealing with it and not making it into such a huge problem. And then I think the other thing is have a proper conversation with the woman who's on maternity. Again, going back to that, you know, do they want to get straight back into their careers? Are they going to want to take a bit more time off? Are they going to want to take the foot off the pedal a little bit? Um, and that's really important because some women will have fantastic support networks and can just come straight back at their career and keep going because they, you know, they've got the family support that can help them. But others will want to take more time. Um, but also, how much stronger do women come back into the workplace once they've had the family. They're learning to juggle problems every single day. Their time management is absolutely spot on. They can get so much more done in a day than they ever used to because they're just used to having to juggle so much more. So I think if you, if you plan ahead, you know someone's going on maternity, but as women as well, be honest about what you are going to want and what your needs are and, and, and speak up, like you said, about... Um, you know, you have a commitment. But I think the biggest thing that's going to help around the maternity is getting men more involved. And I think, you know, I always feel a bit guilty at events like this because it sounds like we're always having a go at the men and we're absolutely not, okay? It sounds like it's, you know, girl power and, you know, we've got to do it for the girls. It's not, it's not about that. We're just trying to change perceptions. And really, you know, the men have a tough time of it as well. But... The more that men can step up and take more responsibility for family, for childcare, the more that they will leave at four o'clock because they have to do the school run or whatever it is, the more that that makes things equal for women. So the more that we see men working part-time, working flexibly, working from home, doing their share of the childcare, the more it normalises everything for the woman and it's not just a woman's problem. You know, it's not just the women leaving early or taking sole responsibility for the children. Now, I know that's going to be a generational thing. In some countries, they do it a lot better. And I know in different cultures, you know, it's, it's harder just by the way that we are brought up and socialized, etc. But I just think that we'll start to see real difference when we treat it like a, a normal part of life, you know, Giving birth is normal. So we, do, we just need to think about it not as a, as a problem, but actually you know, think about it as a real opportunity. An opportunity as well to, get, to give other people you know, the cover. They can step up and, and take that maternity leave cover. You know, think about women, and that's the point about looking at careers. You know, could you second someone in? Could you get cover from a different team or help someone get a stretch assignment by taking... Uh, covering someone's maternity cover, that sort of thing. Just need to change our mindsets and think about it in a different way. Yeah, so it's not about changing a man. 
No. Please understand as well, correctly. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about changing a man, maybe, maybe only a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but only, sometimes it's enough to change a man's thinking, yeah? And, and um, help them realize yeah. that, that we think about children all the time, yeah? From yeah. the very beginning, uh, we have them. So thinking about the family uh, um, is, uh, something you know very internal we cannot live without that and it's normal right yeah. uh, fi finally the work is done so it's not a problem it shouldn't be any problem uh, but i i saw alex willing to comment uh, and, and uh, no i just um i i just want to underline what catherine said yes. um out of my experience out of the last couple of years what i can see and i'm uh, talking about maternity and paternity so for for men exactly the same. Normally, people come, beth, uh, come back with a different kind of strength. Because quite often, this distance also to the company gave them the time to think about what do they really want to achieve. And quite often, they are changing the roles afterwards. So um, that I think that this kind of break, whatever it is, is it a sabbatical, is it maternity, whatever, it can help you in your career and it should be seen as an advantage, absolutely. So, and I think this is at least what I've seen in, in, in the last couple of years. And with regards to time management and so on, I've never seen so much commitment as from people who came back and have kids or other people that, uh, that they have to take care of um, at home. Cause each and every time when they are responsible for other people as well, they know what it means if someone wants to leave the office at five o'clock because they have a special kind of hobby or something like this, which means that the awareness, and it's all about awareness, is automatically there. So, and this is something what we should appreciate. Yeah, and uh, my, one more point from me uh, about uh, the benefits you mentioned about flexibility, uh, etc. And all these small things that uh, companies can do for the employees. But uh, what we, we, we are keep talking about what the companies should give, right? But by giving, we are receiving a lot. We are receiving long-term long commitment from employees, right? and really loyalty and employee who is really appreciative of these small things uh, the company did and uh, yeah. Thank you. We are uh, run, running out of time. I, I will talk to you, you know, for hours. Um, uh, uh, so final round uh, with a summary and your advice uh, for women and men, uh, what we can do to uh, make a step forward to gender balance. Be vocal, talk about it, ask for support. That would be my, my uh, main advice. So speak up if there's any kind of challenge that you have to face. Talk to people who have already a kind of experience and who can guide you through. Um, make it, um, yeah, so make it public, actually. This is what I, w I would give as an advice, and do not stop talking about it, because um, it has to be a common thing. I hope that in 10 years' time, we do not need to have a conference any longer, which we call gender balance or something like this. Um, but as of now, I can see that we are going to the right direction. Um, but please stand up, um, be vocal, talk about it. That's it. Uh, I will repeat the same, uh, be vocal. I think this is the perfect time right now and perfect opportunity really for us, for women to co-create, to really shape our workplace. Uh, and the second thing uh, is still education, right? Uh, and to everybody here, women, women is really, uh, yeah, we should be keep talking about what's important, what's working, what's not working, what are, what are the expectations. Yeah, I'd say try and seek someone out who can really speak up for you, so a sponsor. Um, if you're already being mentored, being, having a sponsor is the next thing. Try and find someone in your organization that you have a connection with, you've worked with them in the past, they're a higher level to you. And what a sponsor does for you is just champions you. They speak out on your behalf and they will seek out opportunities for you. So I'd say network, 
broaden your network, find new people in the organization that you've not spoken to before, um, see if you can sponsor men, if you can sponsor a woman that you can see has got real talent and they just need a bit of support. That whole point about having confidence to go for a job. Um, women will only go for a role if they meet 100% of the criteria. Men will go for a role if they meet 60% of the criteria, okay? So, so men need to help us women by saying, hey, I think you'd be great to go for that role. I think you're nearly ready or get a bit more uh, experience in this and you then you'll you be ready. You have 60%, it's enough, go, I go. Mean, well, that's it, but yeah, exactly, go, do it. So find someone who you can really connect with and who will sponsor you and help champion your career. And Anna, how would you summarize that? Well, first of all, uh, don't be afraid, yes? I think it's uh, uh, not typical for bringing up kids uh uh, in Polish culture, at least, uh, I don't remember this from childhood, but uh, uh, in US there is the approach that uh, you are unique, you have the uh, gifts that you should share with the world, yes? And uh, I think that uh, it is something that uh, women should consider. Second, uh, find the people who support you and who believe in you, yes? If you are alone, uh, if you are alone it's, it's, it's not possible. And the third, uh, um, uh, it's easier to lead when you uh, love what you do, yes? Personally, it helps me each time when I have the moments, okay, I should give up, I have enough, yes? But then I think, okay, I really like what I'm doing. Actually, I, I love what I'm doing, and it's easier. Thank you so much. Uh, so my conclusion, after all our discussions we have, uh, after uh, what Tom uh, said at the beginning, uh, mentioning all of um, business benefits companies uh, can take uh, uh, from, from gender um, balance in leadership, not only in leadership, in, in a workforce uh, in general, is that, that gender diversity is not only a smart thing to do uh, when it comes to business results, but also it's the right thing to do. And I think that we should all understand that, that this is normal, we should be equal, and then we can really um, achieve a lot of benefits for everyone uh, and on every level, on company level, on individual level, and finally on, um, on the social level. So thank you, thank you a lot uh, for this conversation.